now joined by one of the world's most senior statesmen and the former Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser. Mr. Fraser, thank you very much for being on the show. Good afternoon. Now, we are hearing a lot these days about the prospect of another Cold War, and you actually lived through the original Cold War. Do you think a rerun is possible? A new Cold War is certainly possible, and uh, it's easy to cast blame for the situation that has arisen. Um, I think NATO missed a great opportunity when the, with the breakup of the Soviet Union. I know President Gorbachev believed he had an agreement uh, with the first Bush administration that NATO would not move east. NATO had, after all, done its job. But then it pushed ahead to the borders of Russia. And I can understand Russians believing that that's a provocative move. Last week, as we uh, mentioned, uh, the people of Crimea decided to rejoin Russia. And in justifying their stance, they're citing all sorts of uh, what they see as international precedents in Kosovo, the upcoming referendum in Scotland, and so on and so forth. But the response that they're hearing from the West is that, you know, you shouldn't mix those things. What you are doing is illegitimate, but what we've been doing is totally right. And I wonder if you could help our viewers understand what is so strikingly different about all those examples. Let me answer that this way. From the very beginning, the United States has regarded itself as a exceptional nation, as a nation that's better than all others, that has only ever gone to war to fight for the freedom of other people. Well, that's not really true if you look at American history. America feels it can break international law, that what America does is right. Rules are made for other people, for countries like Russia or countries like Australia. But whatever America does is right because America does it. Now that's in the American psyche. It's in their DNA. But the worst war that tragically Australia supported was the invasion of Iraq and all the damage, all the civilians killed as a consequence of that. That was a total violation of international law. If the United Nations is ever to work, great powers and lesser powers are all going to have to abide by the rules of the organization. But it's the great powers that tend to push the rules aside when it suits their national interest. And therefore, when the United States says that what uh, Russia has done is in defiance of international law, well, that can't be taken as gospel. It, uh, the, 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 the government and the change of power in uh, Ukraine itself was surely in defiance of democratic principles. Why do you think the Australian political elites side so blindly with Washington? Newspapers report things in certain ways. President Putin has had a bad press in the Western media for a very long while. Uh, I think some of this is deliberate. That President Putin uh, has been receiving a lot of bad press in the West, including Australia, and I wonder uh, why do you think uh, the West finds him so disagreeable? Because uh, as it's seen from Moscow, he actually, his rhetoric has been quite conciliatory. He actually, as far as I'm concerned, he tried not to spoil the relations with the West uh, completely. But for some reason, he is almost portrayed in those uh, demonic colors in the West. Why is he so disliked by, uh, by Western politicians and by Western public? Western countries, Western politicians who've contributed to this uh, have been very short-sighted and have been incapable of looking at the larger picture. Whether they've played to what they think is populist sentiment or not, I don't know. Now, President Putin said something about the anti-ballistic missile facilities that the second President Bush wanted to place in Poland and I think Czechoslovakia. He claimed they were aimed at Iran. Well, if I were Russian, I would say they're not aimed at Iran, they're aimed at Russia. And that I would have regarded as a, a hostile move compounding NATO's move to the boundaries of Russia. Uh, I'm sure Chinese, like Russians, have increasingly less tolerance for this language of force. Do you see that as a source of potential 
tension, probably similar to the ones that we've seen uh, these days over Ukraine? Well, the United States speaks with two voices to China. On the one hand, they say they want strategic cooperation, they want economic cooperation, social cooperation. And on the other hand, uh, they tighten, they strengthen their defenses from Japan south through Australia, around uh, Singapore, and even now talking of making India a strategic partner. Um, my Chinese friends say, which America are we to believe? The one that talks cooperation or the one that is seeking to strengthen its already very powerful military forces? And you know, we, we shouldn't forget in these circumstances that China's military expenditure is about 8% of the world's total. America is about 42% of the world's total. The balance of military expenditure um, overwhelmingly, it's American. And is that the way to build peace? America tried in Vietnam. They tried in Iraq. They're trying in Afghanistan, as Russia did. And all three are going to end as failures. Uh, you are one of the few remaining Cold War veterans. And uh, you said previously that, quote, those who thought the Cold War was over and who hoped for a better world are now being proved wrong. Is it really that bad? Uh, you have to be an optimist. We have to hope for a better world and leaders who will understand how to achieve it. Well, um, Mr. Fraser, one thing I know for sure that is that this kind of conversation that, that we just had wouldn't be possible during the Cold War. So I really appreciate you being on the show. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much.